Sunday Bully Live. What is going on, fans? Today we're going to be talking about why is it that so many breeders are hanging them up? <clears throat> this last week I was contacted by several uh, breeders uh, that either were looking at another breed to breed or were <clears throat> just pretty much wanting, wanting to hang it up. What's going on, Maurice? Um, and they all cited the same thing. They said the market is flooded. The XL bully market is flooded. And I'm like, how is the XL bully market flooded? I mean, talk to me. How, how did you come? How did you come to this conclusion? Right? Before before I tell you some of the answers I got, I got. Let me let me just say a couple of things. What's going on, Miss Beth? What's uh, what's going on to everybody, man? But I'm just trying to let you guys just comment. Um, so the difference between I want to say a child and an adult is that at some point when you mature, you start becoming more and more objective. You're wanting more and more facts rather than an emotional response to something, right? Um, you know, so the reason I bring that up, D Taylor celebrating, he got his one year badge, man. Number love for you, D Taylor. Just for that, remind me at the end of the show, D Taylor, you got a free spin. So this is, this is, I said that so I could say this. Um, a lot of times people will jump into the, you know, breeding. Uh, in particular, and again, my point of view is mostly from my breed, American Bully XLs, uh, and my class, that is, the XLs. And, but from what I understand, you could cross-reference this with many other breeds because, I mean, folks, this past week, I even got a call from a Rottweiler breeder talking about he's going to hang it up because his market is oversaturated. Now, I don't know as much about the Rottweiler market per se, because I don't sell Rottweilers, right? Um, like this person does. Uh, Steven Street, we got ourselves a new member, man. Number love, bro. And the sound. Es claro que sí, cabrón. Es claro que sí, cabrón. We're here every Sunday at 10 a.m. We're doing Thursdays. I know this past Thursday, I couldn't make it. You have to excuse me. I had a situation pop up. I just couldn't make it. Um, but definitely we're going to try it this next Thursday, okay? So hang in there with me, guys. Let's go. Happy days, QBN fam. What's up? What's up? Good morning, Bully fam. We got news on the new breedings. Jeremiah, do me a favor. Once I finish talking about this, bring this up again. I'm going to talk to you guys about the new breedings, okay? So um, I said all that to say this. Um, I'm not trying to say that people that are you know, uh, wanting to get out of breeding all of a sudden are immature and their children. I'm not trying to say that. What I'm trying to say is a lot of times when we as humans experience something new, or in this case, you know, um, want to get into a breeding business where we had never bred before. What I notice is a lot of times you're going to get more of an emotional response rather than an objective one. So like, you know, Raul, can you give me an example, bro? Cause like, you know, you're over here talking, but like, give me an example of, of what you heard of what you saw. And you know, the, the examples that I could give you is they had really, um, I, I, I don't want to say it in, in, a, in a way, but their expectations their expectations were unrealistic and their expectations were unrealistic 
because their expectations going into this was more based on emotion than actual facts. So let me give you an example. Uh, none of these breeders have been breeding for more than three years. Um, we just dropped the video last week, uh, giving you guys a roundabout of what breeders make and, and, you know, how long it takes to really, you know, um, gain traction and, 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 and see the numbers maybe that, that you want to see, um, by year number three, year number two is usually the hardest one. Year number three is pretty hard as well because the pups that you're producing, like not, nobody knows, nobody knows you. Like, you know, you, 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 your productions have not been consistently on the ground enough for you to be able to impress people that your dog is able to produce these things. And that, you know, you're actually, your program is actually something that they want to want to make a part of, of their program. Okay, so expectations, I think, is one of the first things um, that that I noticed um, that was completely off. They thought that by year three, they were going to be making six figures. How? 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 I don't care if you're marketing, you know, as hard as you want. In reality, your females are not going to be ready to go until they're around two years old. So by the time, you know, you're three years into this, the pups she probably had on her first litter are now just being one years old. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Now you're at the cusp of actually advancing your program, uh, but you want it on that first litter to be selling pups like, you know, people that have been doing this for, for a long time and that have a, a bigger following and that, you know, have actually put the time and all the effort into marketing. So, you know, I, I definitely don't want to burst anybody's bubble. Uh, in fact, uh, to, to all these people that I spoke to, I was like, it sounds to me like your decision is, is it, it, you're making too quick of a, of a decision. I think you need another year or two before you, you get to that point. Um, but like always, man, but like always, um, it's all about the money sometimes. And that's the driving force. We are in the most capitalistic country in the world. I would be a fool to say that the majority of American bully breeders, American bully XL breeders, and any other class for that matter, is really in it because of the love of the dog. Typically, the main reason they come in is because they see that they can establish an enterprise of their own for the first time ever. Uh, you could tell because of the way that they manage their assets, right? Because whether you like it or not, if your business, if you're into breeding and, and, and that's your business, then the puppies that you produce or the dogs that you have, that is, those are your assets, whether you like it or not, that's what they are. And, um, what ends up happening is they have a conflict between what, what I consider to be right. Um, reality and illusion that's that's where i think that's where i think the rug gets pulled from under you let me go to the questions here real quick before i continue um all right we got steven street glad to be here number love man colin everybody know man let's get the knowledge and the drill uh we're here to grow and learn support our community please hit those likes and shares we can grow together and welcome team also guys <clears throat> excuse me for those of you that don't know us or are seeing us for the first time, my name is Raul from QB and Kennel. Um, our channel, uh, we do this every Sunday at 10 a.m. It's called Sunday Bully Live. For as little as $5 a month, you can become a member and I'm gonna answer member questions. You know you're a member because you have that little thing right there, the little circle. This right here, Kyle has it because he is a moderator in my channel. So don't worry about the little tool, worry more about the little circle. Uh, and he's letting you know if you haven't downloaded QBN app, it's a must to stay up to date with everything QBN. In fact, we got ourselves, um, <clears throat> we got a video showing you guys real quick how it is that you can download it and what's in QBN app.
That's it. So if you guys want to consult, if you want to see upcoming breedings, by the way, that breeding there, the black label breeding, more likely than not, we're not using Tyrone. I'm just letting you know right now, uh, more likely than not, uh, I've actually, what, what ends up happening guys, when you're part of a breeding program and, and you're running it, whenever your females don't take <clears throat> in, in a particular cycle, it really complicates your program because now you were counting on that happening so you could set other things up. And when that doesn't happen, then, you know, sometimes you got to move on and it's, it, it just is what it is guys. Um, let's see here, man. Let's, let's interact here. Uh, I haven't seen it flooded says, uh, in Sarapa. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to catch up guys. Give me one second. All right. Goliath is on his way home with Lucy, man. Number love, man. Chris Lewis, since I got my pup a year ago, I'm sorry. Here we go. Uh, a year ago, it seems like anyone with two dogs is breeding and they don't care about anything other than the money. Their dogs are way too young <clears throat> and have flaws and they breed them. Well, Chris Lewis, the, the fact that the dogs have flaws, um, if the dogs didn't have flaws, really, uh, you wouldn't have breeders, right? Because breeders are trying to Breed, breed out flaws or even gain attributes and that sort of thing. So I, I'm, I would never ding somebody for that. Uh, I started out with dogs that had, I mean, had a lot of flaws. Um, and you progress to minimize those flaws and improve on them, right? That's, that's what breeding is all about. Um, but <clears throat> what you're saying about anybody has got two dogs calls themselves a kennel. Anybody has got two dogs is already breeding right away is true. I, I, I will say that. Um, but just because of that happening, I wouldn't realistically say that the market is flooded. I wouldn't because that person that has the two dogs that just bought two dogs there, say, for example, a male and a female, he's going to breed to her. She's going to have puppies. Now, when he's got the pups or more than likely, he's going to keep a female. Now he's going to need a stud for that female. You see what I'm saying? So he may not be buying another pup because now he's producing them, but now he's needing studying. If you're a kennel, right? Uh, and I consider six or more dogs to be considered a true kennel. Um, I'm sure that if you have males, you're going to want to stud them. I mean, it's just part of the business plan, right? Um, very rare. You're going to find a, a kennel that doesn't stud any one of their males. Uh, I'm just saying. Um, we got rock solid saying I'm changing my program now to hopefully produce and have more studs so I can possibly just make enough to keep the business. All right. If you haven't watched my video on how much breeders make the most recent one, that is, I suggest you do. Uh, Shaytree says, I want to be a breeder, but I have no support from my partner, so I will not breed. And I wanted to breed for the love of the American bully. Well, Ms. Shaytree, I respect your decision because you will need help from your partner irregardless. B Bully says, good morning, Bully fam. Uh, like, share. Uh, you're not a member. Become one. The knowledge is well worth it. Love, love, love bro. Uh, it's a process and you have to be patient. It is. Yeah, I mean, it truly is, guys. Um, and if you can't wait until year five, I would suggest don't start. If you can't, if you can't take it on the chin for five years, and, and I don't mean... Uh, what I mean by that is you're going to spend money up front to buy dogs and then you're going to be paying for food and, you know, vaccines and that kind of stuff and facilities. <clears throat> but you're really not going to see uh, a significant amount until probably around year number five. Because in that video I made about how much breeders make, we spoke about money coming in. And that's all we spoke about. We really didn't talk about Okay, this year you made 50 grand off of your breeding program. It was profit. What are you gonna do with those with that 50,000? Are you just gonna go on a vacation and spend it all? Or are you gonna improve your facilities? Or are you gonna secure maybe an outside stud that's gonna complement what you got going on? You know, yada, yada, yada. So that part of it, we, we didn't go into. 
Uh, didn't want to bore you guys on it. Uh, we may have to come back to that video and be a little bit more detailed and more specific. Rock Solid said, because uh, females only have two litters yearly, but I can stud out throughout the year. Yeah. If I can make $2,500 profit a month, I'll be fine. That is possible, Rock Solid. Um, but I will also say, uh, is it, let, let me ask you this, Rock Solid, and anybody listening, I want you to give me an answer. How many years do you think Rock Solid would have to be breeding his stud or, you know, studying his dog out in order to have enough dogs out there to show that his stud is actually worthy and through his marketing and everything to be able to realistically stud a dog every month? Because it comes down to marketing, guys, but not just marketing. You got to show that your dog what your dog brings to the table is it symmetry is he overdone in the head or the shoulders or is his rear like off the charts what is it that your dog brings to the table right uh jeremiah is saying uh i've been in the market for another pup new breeders wanting to charge dollar for the first litter and no health test on their dogs yeah the whole health testing thing guys um you know i stopped I stopped pushing it. Um, I, I educate on it. I talk about it, but I stopped pushing it. And I'm going to tell you why. I stopped pushing it because people don't want to health test until I want to say until the next five to 10 years, health testing is not going to be the thing. And that is mostly because People that have dogs that are four years old that have already been studying that dog for four years, that don't get me wrong, they've already embarked the dog. But the minute they see that their dog has this pathology, this illness, this sickness, whatever, they got genes for that. Do you really think they want to show you their genetic test? Right, they were charging five thousand dollars a stud for this magnificent stud, and now you find out. He passes on, you know, kidney issues. Now, what are you going to do? You see what I'm saying? So that's the reason why they don't want to stud. So when you call a breeder up, right? And you're like, hey, man, I'm excited. That's a good looking boy. Can I have his pedigree? Sure. Boom. They send that right away. Because the pedigree, the way it's been marketed, it, it, it kind of sets up the sale. Because you're able to see all these other dogs that impress you behind the dog. Right? That's the reason they want to show you the pedigree. The minute you ask for Embark, I'm going to give you this tip. I'm going to give you this tip. Pay attention. When you ask for Embark and you receive it and you look at the tabs on top and it doesn't say health. Listen, don't even ask for the health. Just walk the other direction. If they did not upfront, if they were not transparent with you, and they showed you health from the get, walk the other direction. Trust me on that, man. Because check it out. Go, if you haven't downloaded QBN app, go ahead and download it. I'll show you every single one of my dogs. Pedigree's there, but also genetic tests are there. You know why genetic tests are there? Because there's nothing there that you need to run away from. And that's that's whether you would like it or not, that's part of my brand and it's part of my marketing. I show you straight up. Yeah, this one's clear. This one's got CRD4, but you know what? CRD4 does not affect our breed. It doesn't. Don't take my word for it. Do your research. It doesn't affect us. Right? So I'm more than willing to show it. But why is this dude over here studying a dog for 10 grand and he sure as hell doesn't want to show it? Come on, man. Put it together. Just like anything in life, you got to pay your dues in this game. It's not a game. I'm gonna let you know, Brayman, this is not a game. That's part of the problem. Uh, I got hit a year ago talking about the language that is used when it comes to breeding. This is not a game. This, and, and we just dropped a poll. This breeding can be cyclical. And if you're looking to breed, if you're looking to get into breeding and you're thinking that every time you produce 10 pups, people are just going to flock to you with $6,000 in their hand to buy all 10 pups. Um, you haven't done the marketing legwork. Nobody knows who you are. If you're two years into this, 
nobody knows who you are, guys. Um, and it's it's not a slight at you. We were all at that point at some point. I don't care who it was. But at two years, your, your female now is going to breed for the first time. <clears throat> how can you expect? You, you know what I'm saying? How, how can? Yeah, she's got great potential and all that. But potential is one of those things that could go north or south. You don't know. I don't know. Nobody does. Right. So, <clears throat> you know, what I what I'm going to tell you guys is this. Um, if you're if you're going to hang it up, if you're willing to hang it up at three years, it's because you were unrealistic at first or you really didn't do this for the love of it. You're doing it for the money. And in three years into it, you're not going to see the money. You're just not. I don't care who you are. You got to compete against QBN and against Joe Blow down the street and the other guy over there and the bigger kennels that that are spending so much money on you know advertising and whatnot um what makes you any different what what make what sets you apart from them if you haven't even produced or you just produce your first litter or even your second litter and and the pups from the first litter are one years old they're not mature they're not going to show that 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 mature body that that all that at, at one years old they're just not it's not going to be there and so you know oh the market is flooded for me when i hear that for me is an excuse straight up is an excuse now you can sit here and say oh all these pup bag deals and all this that's why i can't sell pubs this and that look i'm gonna ask you a couple of questions and you need to answer them yourself because there, there's no no one in the world that's going to truly know the answer to those questions but you have you putting have you been uh, taking two pictures a day of your dogs and posting them do you have you grown your instagram have you grown your TikTok? have you grown your facebook have you know have you done that have you put your dog out there are you putting your dog in good light a lot of times a lot of times and i don't want to call it drama even though there is a lot of drama in, in breeding, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, a lot of times you guys don't know how to differentiate yourself from your brand. OK, if you're going to put them together, if you are going to be part of the brand, right, and you're going to put them together, you need to start behaving like a brand. You don't just, oh, we're X, Y, Z bullies and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, vote, vote, vote left. Uh, I mean, vote right or vote left. What are you doing? You ever seen Nike say, oh, we're leaning left in this election. No, we're, we're leaning right. No, they will never do that. Nike says, just do it. That's it. Just do it. Right? They, they don't sit there also and play that drama game. Oh, Adidas. You don't see basketball players, you know, using Adidas as much as soccer players. Nike is for basketball players. They, they don't they don't do that. They don't do that. They stand on their own merits. And the problem I see, and I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So if I'm wrong, please voice. Um, what I see is that a lot of you lack confidence in running a breeding program, in running a business, because you didn't do your homework. You just jumped in because the you you all you're hearing is money and and you need to jump in there and then once you're there right and and you start seeing the breeders day to day do you know what breeders do day to day do, do you know what i do day to day I, I can tell you this i can tell you this you look at our marketing you're you're, you're gonna love it you're going to see dog stacking. You're going to see puppies. You're going to see this. You're going to, see, you know what you're not going to see. You're not going to see me, you know, cleaning my kennels up to midnight. Sometimes you're not going to see me picking up poop. Like I got to do every day or back when, you know, back, back, back in the day, uh, you know, if I was late coming in or whatever, my wife would have to go do it. Yeah. You, you don't see that. We do make it look easy. We make you think like, oh, and then, and then, you know, I've seen arrogant people say, oh, if he could do it, I could do it too. Really? 
what do you know about dogs? I don't know nothing, but if he did it, I could do it. Yeah, that's the, and then you jump in and then you post a puppy, right? That, um, you didn't take your time to take a picture. You didn't uh, take your time to learn <clears throat> a little bit about photography or any of that. You just, uh, just took the picture. Now the dog is, is standing a little wonky or whatever. And now you're wondering why the hell nobody's even budging at the pup. Well, you just, the picture shows, <laughs> picture shows this, 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 and that. Or you, or it shows you being lazy. You just took a picture. And let me tell you something, guys. The level of competition is highest at the lazy level. That's where it's highest. The, the, the more you put into it and, and the more you try and refine, the less competition, the less resistance you're going to find. But if you're lazy, you're just here for the money and, you know, you you're on facebook oh yeah this dude's dogs are crap this that blah, blah, blah. you know what you're doing what you're doing is scaring away customers man you really are because i can tell you this whenever i'm gonna look for a stud or and i've learned my lesson whenever you're gonna look for a stud or anything like that you research that breeder and you find out the business they did before before you even call them, before you even put a dollar in their hands, find out the type of business. And if you see that breeder creating drama, especially with somebody that either used their stud or bought a puppy from them or anything like that, I'll let you, I'll let you be the judge as to whether you want to use that dog or not. Cause I don't care how, how great the dog looks. There's always another one. So, when you look at the dog and you're impressed by the dog, I want you to take your eyes off of the dog. And I want you to look at that breeder behind the dog because that's who's going to make or break that dog. That's just a fact, fine. It's just a fact. Um, and that's why many of you, uh, you know, the breeding, uh, let's call it the breeding business is very clickish. And the reason it's clickish is because you have a lot of people that jump in just for the money. They don't educate themselves and they play follow the leader. They're the sheep, right? That's what they are. And I'm saying this because I know many of you are listening and you're probably getting upset with me because I'm telling you the truth that you need to hear. I don't care. What's what ends up happening is you don't know what the hell you're doing. And now you're $10,000 in. And now you feel you got to jump with this crowd, right? So they're marketing coattail. You're going to write it because that's going to, that's going to land you a few bucks. But then you find out when you have your first litter, you know, you had eight pups, you were excited. You only sold two. Now, what are you going to do with six? For two years, you ain't done nothing. You thought that being part of this clique was going to solve your issue. You know how easy it is to learn. All you got to do is put time every day 20 minutes 30 minutes an hour this podcast this and many before all you got to do is put your phone hit 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 play and while you're driving don't even look at it just listen just saying how many of you are really doing that how many i know i could tell right away because of the comments I could tell right away when I go into social media, the way you present yourself and the way you, everything about, uh, about the way you're representing your brand, whether you like it or not, tells me if your brand spanking you, if you know what the hell you're doing, or if you're part of a clique and you're trying to ride a coattail. And the problem you have when you're part of a clique and you're trying to ride a coattail is that there's gonna be one person at the top and everybody else is going to be behind him riding that coattail. And that person at the, at the very top knows that you know a lot less about what's going on than he does. And when that happens, that's when the big fish eats the minnow. Nine times out of ten, it's that big fish that's eating the very dude that's 
sitting on his coattail. Because honestly, to begin with, what are you doing riding somebody else's coattail? What are you doing trying to copy somebody else? Why? You're not them. And not only that, if you want to stick out, you need to be different. Straight up. Somebody has to tell you, right? Somebody has to tell you. I don't mean to be bloom and doom, guys. I just, um, it, it um, I, I was just so surprised. We, you know, the, the people that reached out to me this week, I want to say it was maybe about five of them. Could have been four, could have been six. I'm going to say five. Um, they were just, you know, they were like, Raul, I don't know. I want you to see my entire program. Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. All right, let's go in. When did you start? I started, you know, two years ago, right after COVID. Okay. Um, how many dogs you got? Okay. How many females you got? Do you have any mature females? Oh, this, she's she's ready to breed. This is her third heat. No, no, no. Talking about, do you have a three-year-old female running around? Oh, no, no, no. This is the oldest female I got. So you, you haven't done anything wrong as far as that's concerned. You just haven't produced, bro. Right? And then let's go into your social media. Yeah, you're over here talking crap about, uh, I don't know, X, Y, Z. Let me give you, let me just give you an example as to why you shouldn't uh, mix politics with your brand. Just an example. Now, if one day you crack a joke or something like that, <laughs> I don't recommend it, but just hear me out. So let's say 33% of the country is right and 33% is left and 33% is middle and that 1% is other, right? So it's, it's pretty fair all the way through. You come out there and you side with any one of these um, political uh trends or, or not trends, uh, political sides. If you, if you, if you side with the right or you side with the left, you're going to piss the other two off. You're going to piss the other two off guys. Don't don't, if you're going to talk about politics, you need to open your own accounts and go talk about politics there. And even there, I strongly discourage it. Let me ask you this of the biggest breeders of American bully excels. Do you see any one of them talking about politics? The most successful breeders I've been around, I have communicated with or whatnot. It's always about the dogs. So if you're brand new into this and you're not getting the results you want, have you asked yourself, am I truly being objective? Or was it an emotional, impulsive move to jump into this without really knowing what I was jumping into? Because if that's the case, and only you can, only you know the answer to that, only you can be honest with yourself. If that's the case, it's easily fixed. It is very easily fixed. I promise you. What you must do is you must be objective. And number two, you need to stand on your own two feet. It's cool to have friends, right? You don't need an entourage. You don't need an entire clique, right? To take pictures of your dogs every day and take video and be their agent and show them in the best light. In fact, I'm pretty willing to guarantee that in that clique that you're in, there's somebody with a high-end camera that charges money to do that. So in reality, that person is part of the clique in order to get paid. Are you getting paid? I'm just saying, man, it, it's really not that hard. It really is not that hard. Uh, second city, uh, do you constantly give the dogs their portion of garlic every day or do you have a rotation? I do it every, I do it three weeks straight every day. And then I give them a five day rest. That's what I do. And I have a little calendar down there. Every time I go, I check that this way. I don't forget. Get yourself a little whiteboard, right? That has the little calendar on there. Just put checks until three weeks are complete and give them five days off and then come back. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think, okay. Our panicking, uh, I think 
okay are panicking because they aren't able to sell pups. People aren't spending money right now and puppies aren't moving like they were in COVID. People got into breeding with a get rich quick mindset. I, yeah, this is true, Miss Beth. Um, but I also think that a lot of these people that are complaining and are saying that the market is flooded, like I'll give you an example and I can't name, I, I don't name the people that consult with me, but one of them, I purposefully went to a uh, Facebook group, a very well-known Facebook group that has over a hundred thousand uh, uh, subs or people or members. And I went in there and I punched their, their kennel name to see how many times they posted, right? They had two posts in the last six months. And I tell them too, and I'm going to tell you guys, so listen up. There are clues left behind by successful breeders in your face, letting you know how to be successful. The problem you have is you're not objective. This is why you can't see it. You're seeing from your heart. You're seeing from your click. You're not seeing it for black and white what it is. Let me give you an example. Successful breeders, are their pictures high resolution? Yeah, they are. What is the position or the stance the dog is in when they post the dog? Are they just grabbing the phone and taking the first picture that pops up and loading that up? Or is the dog properly stacked? I'm not saying conceal flaws, guys. What I'm saying is put a little bit more effort in what you're doing because like I said before, in the lazy level, that's where you're going to get the most competition. And that's why you're not selling clubs because the more time you put into this, the less competition you're going to have. Just keep it real with you, man. All right, let me move on. Let me get into some questions. Um, and Sarata says, uh, I've seen people get rid of all their dogs, get new dogs, and then sell female when she didn't take the first time. Yeah. And 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 the, look, and Sarata, someone that does this right here immediately tells me if if I'm if I'm somebody that's following this person or somehow I, I see what's happening, what it tells me is it's all first of all, their main motivation is is obviously money. Okay. I'm not gonna kill you for that. Okay, but what I'm going to kill you for is you haven't learned a damn thing. You haven't taught yourself a damn thing. Breeding is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. What? No. Do I do I have to be the one to tell you that if you have a full blown kennel, you're not going on vacation? Do I have to be the one that tells you that, or or is that something you actually already figured out? Oh, yeah, man. Because for the last, you know. Three years, we haven't been. Uh, what do you think is going to happen when you drop two litters, three litters, and you keep a female from each? Now you have the three dogs you started out with and three more. And it takes time and dedication. I mean, if you couldn't go on vacation with the three dogs you had, what makes you think you're going to go on vacation with six? I, I, you know, look, guys. It, in my opinion, if you were to ask me, is the market flooded? No, there's plenty for everybody. Now, with that being said, highest, highest amount of competitive competitiveness is going to be at the lazy level. So if you buy a dog, say for just studying, and he's going to be so amazing. I don't even have to market. You know how many people I've known that have grand champions or even produce amazing dogs, kennels that are producing great dogs. They're selling dogs between 1500 and 2500. They got no marketing. They never, they rarely take a picture. Uh, when they take the picture, the dog is a little wonky. Um, okay. That's fine. You're lazy on that end. Okay. So you, you get what you deserve. You get what you deserve. Every time you post something, you need to understand you're showing the market 
what it is that you're showing, whatever that may be. So if the market is about buying dogs and you're over here, you know, saying uh, for Israel or against Israel, that's got nothing to do with selling dogs. But now, now I happen to be, and I'm just giving an example, guys. I happen to be Muslim. And the statement you said about Israel should go in there and do that. You've insulted me in a way where I will never do business with you and vice versa. I could be Jew and I hear you make uh, all Jews should die. You think I'm going to buy from you? And so a lot of times you, you do this over and over day by day, day after day. And you think nobody's noticing. How stupid is that? You go online and you call somebody a B-I-T-C-H. Right there for the world to see. You're, you're used to, I don't know. You're used to that type of drama. But now it's time to sell puppies and you only sold one or two. I bet if I could take you back to those moments and tell you, hey, when you wrote B-I-T-C-H to this person, five potential customers no longer ever want to do business with you. They don't want to associate themselves with you because they feel that you're somebody who's going to bring, bring drama to them. And they're about improving their brand. And that's just one comment that you made in one day. Multiply that by 365 days in a year. And then you realize why you're not selling puppies. I, I don't come on here, you know, ah, Biden is a knucklehead and, and, and Trump is uh, this and, and Obama should have done this and this guy should have. Do I have my opinions on all that? Absolutely. Have you heard me throw this out there? How, how does that benefit my brand? Say Nike said that. How does that benefit, benefit Nike? And regardless, whoever's elected, <laughs> you're going to have to deal with it. Your business is still going to run regardless. Just keeping it real with you, man, because some of y'all, man, oh, oh, Marty's flooded, blah, 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 blah. I go into your account. It's a big freaking click. You guys love to attack, uh, you know, other, other breeders. You, you know, shit sling at each other and you're not wondering why nobody wants to buy and i don't know the, the dog has has this and it has gucci and bmw and lamborghini all up in there why are they not buying <laughs> bro you got a bigger problem than than even breeding itself you really do because you're subjective you're making decisions out your heart you're making comments from your heart you're not using your noggin. Ms. Beth says, that being said, a uh, breeder that have breedings for, uh, been breeding, I guess, for over 10 years are also saying the market is flooded and they are taking a year off or throwing the towel in completely. Really? Interesting. Interesting. Um, I will say this. Breeding, like any other industry in the world, I could care less if it's, you know, uh, underwater basket weaving i could care less what it is it's cyclical cyclical it goes through cycles if this is the first time you're hearing this you are a subjective person and you need to start being objective okay it's cyclical everything is cyclical gas prices are cyclical inflation believe it or not I could care less what side you're on. I could care less what the policies are. That can also be cyclical, right? Um, you know, any anything else you could think of is cyclical. And therefore, you know, when it comes to, to pups, it comes to breeding, it can be cyclical, guys. And if you're not pre uh, prepared for a rainy day, yeah, this is why you need to hang it up. So if you've been a breeder for 10 days and you're hanging it up, what it tells me 
you're hanging it up because the market is flooded. It tells me there's something else up in there. There's something else up in there, man, because if you've been breeding for 10 years, you should at this point, you should be up there, you know, the creme of the creme. And the creme of the creme is the last one to get affected by any type of flooding. The ones that are going to get flooded are going to be the ones that are lazy because that's where the most competition is at. That's with breeding and anything else in life. If you find the path of least resistance, you're going to get, you know, you're, 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 you're not going to get the very best or, or, or the results that you're looking for is very highly unlikely to happen. Just a fact, you know, you mean to tell me that in 10 years, uh, let's say in one year, just throwing a number out there, you made $60,000 and, and trust me, that's a real low number considering somebody's been breeding 10 years and let's just guess it's a full blown kennel. So six dogs or more. Um, what that tells me is, and I see it a lot too with breeders is you haven't invested and you don't, you haven't saved anything. Have you, you spending everything like free willy because you think this is going to go on forever. Yeah. And the reason, the reason I know, and the reason I can tell that these things may be happening is because I've seen breeders that have been breeding for quite a while. I'm not going to say 10 years, but I'll say quite a while. And you have seen them, so, you know, sell various litters. I mean, more than several, like many litters. And the facilities are still the same. There's no improvement. There's no nothing. It's, uh, it's the same thing over and over again. Um, yeah, that's not gonna work, man. A long time to see if stud worth is a lot. Uh, people think they can charge a high stud fee out of the gate instead of slowly raising it. I've seen recently, I've seen some grand champions uh, studying for less than $3,000. I'll just say that grand champion. But, 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 you know, you've, you're so subjective that you've lied to yourself to the point of delusion that you think that because this dog is yours and it has Gucci, Bugatti and Lamborghini that, uh, you're going to be able to do it better than them. Good luck. Ms. Beth is saying I will still health test because it's a great tool. I think health testing has to be done irregardless. And I think everyone just about now everyone is doing it and those and those that see the result that they don't want to see say they haven't done it it's a scam it's a reverse scam oh no no i i haven't embarked because xyz no 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 don't, no need to embark because i i do things the old way yeah mm -hmm. I hear you. So you're charging $6,000 and you can't do a $100 test. Okay. Or a $150 test. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep fishing for the newbies, bro. Uh, Dietrich Hagen says, uh, good morning, everyone. I pray all is good and y'all and y'all's pups. Thank you, man. Number below. Does that mast cell tumor affect our breed? Good question. It's coming out now. It's a new thing. It's a new marker. I've spoken about mast cell tumor in the past. So our breed one of the uh, one of the curses or not curses let me rewind it's not a curse one of the things about our breed is that it's a breed that is composite and has other breeds brought into it that makes it hard to get to a point to stabilize everything for it to all look uniform across the board with subtle differences okay that's where we're at. That's that our breed. That's, that's the difficulty right now. The difficult stage we're in. The positive thing that comes out of that is that, for example, CRD4, we are all aware the CRD4 was popping up on pretty much every, every dog, right? Uh, or, or at least a good 60% of them. Let's just throw that number out there. So CRD4, for those of you that don't know, is retinal atrophy. So the retina, once a dog is maybe around two or three atrophies, which means it withers, it just 
dies, shrivels up, stops working. And when that happens, it causes uh, blindness to your dog. So what, it, what we ended up finding out is that our dogs have shown a flag or, a, or a, it, it's popped up as a marker that it's there. The thing is that you need genetic code, right? That could be thousands or even millions long for that CRD4 to be in place and actually affect the eyesight. So breeds that are usually affected by CRD4 are like Labradors and Golden Retrievers. Luckily for us, when our breed, because it is a composite breed, when it was brought together, you know, you're not going to breed a bully to a, or a, a, a pit or staffy or even a bulldog to a golden retriever and call it a bully because it's just, you know, so golden retrievers, I highly doubt were brought in. I don't know. I could be surprised, but I highly doubt it. And then um, the same with labs, you know, they might have been brought in, but not not in, in a large proportion. But even if they did, because they're being crossed with a terrier and bulldog every time you're bringing that other breed in you're chopping that long uh genetic code is getting chopped and replaced with that terrier or that bulldog dna so now crd4 in order to make your dog blind it needed this is throw a, a simple number out there it needed a thousand uh characters to be exactly the way it needs to be but because you bred it to dogs that have both terrier and bulldog in it and it got chopped up now you only have 250 carriers yes the markers are there for crd4 but you need a thousand for it to actually happen but right now you're only showing 250 so it doesn't affect the breed and that's what we found out about Amer about american bullies that crd4 does not affect our breed i contacted um embark about mass cell I want to say about three months ago, I had conversations with a couple of them and uh, they don't know if it affects our breed. They all they know is that it's a new marker that they were able to identify within our breed. That's it. You're going to see mass cell pretty much on every American bully, in my opinion. And um, the only way we're going to know if it really affects our breed is with time. That's the only way. Now, mass cell is one of those things that usually pops up. I want to say when your dog is around five or six, more more leaning to six than five. And from what I have informed myself with through my vet and other vets that I consult, um, it can if it's detected in time, it's a simple operation, and and you're done. Um, but it is what it is. It is a marker. We don't know yet if it affects our breed. Uh, second city, SEMA likely to become a successful program starting with studs only. There are so many studs on the market. No one is willing to risk a breeding with an unproven dog or kennel. Second city, it sounds, you see, you see what I'm talking about, guys. Look at this comment right here. Look at this comment right here. Okay. This is a comment of somebody that is being objective. These are the comments. I say Feliciano says, what if breeders don't have dog embark at all, fam? What if they're carrying something that might be a dominant gene? There's a lot of breeders that still don't embark. I say, I, 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 I disagree with you. I think that a lot of breeders are embarking. What I think is happening is when they, first of all, I think a lot of breeders don't know how to read an embark. And they see CRD4 and they're already freaking out. Straight up. But if they did know that CRD4 doesn't affect our breed, then they'll see, say, for example, mast cell tumor. Oh my God, MCT, no. Bro, MCT is going to appear on every American bully going forward. Bottom line. In fact, if I don't see MCT on there, I really need, I really want to see your dog. <laughs> I really want to see your dog. Is it, is it all terrier? <laughs> you know what, what you know what, there's something going on so i think they are i think sometimes you know things like you know renal issues do come up and things like that and they don't want to show it because they've already been breeding the dog and they've already been making money so they know that if they show this the dog loses its value overnight straight up 
Guys, I see a lot of non-member uh, questions and responses. Uh, if you want to become a member, you can go down to the description below for as little as $5, you can become a member. Um, uh, and, and we could have this conversation. We do this every Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, and it's open for everyone. Let me just show you guys how to do it. Right. So, yep, you go there. Huh. Oh, never mind, guys. This video is about how to look up um, information on our website. Uh, I mean, on our YouTube page, if you're looking for any particular uh, video, all you got to do is go to our homepage, click on the search, and you can put things like um, high rear. And I guess somehow it's able to find the videos where I mentioned high rear, uh, whatever you want to know, you just type it up on there and it, it kind of finds them, finds the videos that I speak on that. So it makes your life that much easier. You get your answers that much faster. Okay. All right, let's go to the questions, man. Let me, let me, let me, let me catch up here a little bit. Um, uh huh. Martina says, I'm loving the mornings live. Raul's straight cutthroating. There ain't no sugar coating here. Well, I mean, guys, honestly, there's, there's, oh, how can I sugarcoat it? How can I sugarcoat the fact that um, the market isn't flooded? You're just lazy and subjective. Like, straight up. I see the pictures, man. It's like, dude like really you just posted that for the world to see like that like you just a random picture just throw it up there i don't care okay you reap what you sow rgb says this is true what raul said is exactly what happened to us with a big breeder out here we decided to walk away sometimes that's the best thing sometimes the best thing to do is walk away when you deal with someone and their business practices are not up to your standard even if you spent money Best thing to do is walk away, guys. Don't get into that drama. Don't get, just walk away. Walk away. Uh, Furman says, um, I would say it's poor marketing, not getting your dog seen. I'm personally building all my platforms to the best of my ability and staying open to other ways to grow a network. Guys, does this sound like somebody that is subjective or somebody that's objective and busting his ass to get his brand out there? Just saying, man. Saludos. I said it. What's going on, brother? Number love. By the way, what what it do with Big Lou? This dude be dropping some amazing videos. Make sure to support his channel whenever you guys get a chance, man. Number love for you, bro. And Sarata says, then they are blaming people selling for less than them. Listen, listen. Guys, have you ever been to the flea market? Do you ever see a, a, a somebody selling bananas on one side and somebody selling it on the other? and they're actually yelling at each other? Or you go to the mall and you see them little kiosks in the middle. Do you ever see one of them kiosks that's selling jewelry saying, hey, don't buy from the guy two kiosks from me because you know he's got bad breath? No. The minute you see somebody blaming, playing the, when you're playing the blame game, bro, immediately 99% of the time, you need to look at yourself first and you need to be objective. I keep saying it, man. A lot of immature people out here that are, call themselves adults and the way they act online is just appalling. Sally Adams, genetic testing is your only predictor of future illness and disease. It can also let you know if anything undesirable has backdoored your bloodline. Absolutely, man. Does this sound like somebody that is immature or... or being subjective? No. I'm just saying, man. Uh, Furman says, got to go go out there and see the dogs in person, network, and network some more, attend shows, have good quality picks. is a must, and not the same one over and over. Sally says, whoever asked about MCT, any dog can get MCT. It's much. By the way, well, I, I'm not going to say what, Sally, what your title is. If you want, go ahead and say it, and then I'll let people know what it is. I don't want to throw you out there like that, but I know what your title is. It's much less likely in a dog who is on a species appropriate diet. And there's some other factors that influence that I raise boxers. So it's on my radar. You know, Sally, you hit that on so many levels, so many levels. 
Um, I've never lost a dog to MCT. Never lost a dog to a tumor. I've never lost a dog to an illness. And, you know, I, I've lost dogs to snake bites. I, I've lost a dog that pretty much killed and ate a toad. I'm just saying, why? What, what am I feeding? Am I feeding kibble or am I feeding raw? I'm feeding raw. Do my dog, do my dogs look unhealthy to you? Do they, do they, I mean, I just had a group of people come here yesterday to pick up pups. They were like, man, your dogs look great. Coat looks great. No allergies, none of that stuff. It matters. Definitely matters. KS Kramer says, are you reading a shamrock? KS Kramer. You must have some sort of insight. Somebody might have, because I haven't announced it. So that tells me already. There's only one other person that I've spoken to about this. You see how you see how things get figured out quickly. So let me let me tell you guys real quick. Oh yeah, uh, Martin Hernandez says off topic. Raul, why is Kai Kai no longer on your study list? Because um, QB and K Indy what? What used to be my affiliate, no longer am I affiliated. That's why Kai Kai is no longer on my stun list. That's it. Keeping it real with you. Uh, I've spoken to some well-known name breeders here in Northern Cali, and I surprised to find out that they don't embark. So my question to you is, why are you buying from a non-embark dog? Why are you buying from a non-embark? Now, don't get me wrong. You know, you may have a situation where you have a grand champion. <laughs> then it comes down to the breeder. Do you want to make, do you want to take a risk? Because that's also on the table. You may be able to look me in the eye and say, look, Raul, I understand, bro. That Embark really helps with, with, you know, minimizing health issues and that sort of thing. But I really want this blood and I want to take a risk. I have, I've done it. Every single puppy from that litter got embarked. And you know what? If they came up with something that was completely undesirable, they were cold. And cold is another word for saying they had to be put down. Okay, I don't put my dogs down. I take them to the vet for them to be put down there, uh, make it as humanely as I can. But, you know, you, 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 all of a sudden you bred to this outside dog and all of a sudden, you know, you have dogs with, I don't know, five legs or, or two tails. <laughs> you don't want that. You got to put it down, right? What some of y'all don't understand is that when in underlying illnesses appear, you also, you know, oh, they, that can't be seen. So we want to push it out, you know, and you can't do that once you embark, you know, and that's there. Yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go there. Um, California Bulldog Pride, I love everything that you're saying. Number love, man, appreciate you. Just because the stud is everything you want and need, but he is only as good as the owner. Raul hit the nail on the head. Yeah, absolutely, bro. I always look at the dog, looks good. Now, let's look at the owner. I actually spend more time trying to figure the owner out than I do the dog. You'd be surprised, guys. You'd be surprised how um, your love for a dog will make you blind to the shadiness of the owner. Uh, Sally, good morning, Miss Sally Ann. Always look forward to everything you have to say. Thank you. All right. Um, Shay Tree, Raul, I love your truths. Thank you for keeping it real. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. But DNA and embark testing is not only a price factor, but some individuals may not trust it entirely as it's still fairly new. Uh, yet, to my knowledge, there isn't a place to amend the end result. Of course there is. There is. You could challenge the result and you could have them rerun the test and embark or whoever else you see Davis. Uh, what was the other one? Wisdom panel. Yeah. Rerun it. Run it again. I, I've had people reach to me, reached out to me and said, look, mom was all clear. Dad is all clear. And this is popping up. I'm like, that can't happen. Are you sure that can't happen? That's, 
you're talking about where where did that dominant gene come from if you're doing an outcross you're not inbreeding if you're inbreeding that's a whole different ballgame but if you're doing an outcross and a recessive gene remember guys both sides right the trait coming from dad and the trait coming from mom they all they both have to be there in order for this pathology to be there but when you look at mom's dna she doesn't have it when you look at dad's dna he doesn't have it so when you put it together how is it that the puppy now has it when it was not an inbreeding there's something wrong somebody either put the wrong tube in there i, I don't know and bark we need a retest yeah, that, that's how you do it bro Jeremiah is saying, have you thought about a mentoring program? Your videos do a lot of information, but that hands-on mentoring from someone like can potentially uh, better the breed. Jeremiah, I, we do have a mentoring program. If you go over to our homepage to the membership tab where most of y'all became members, for $5, we answer questions here every Sunday at 10 a.m. I'm here and I'm answering member questions. If you want mentorship, I'm going to pay more. Once a month, you get a one-on-one, -on -one, 20 minute consult with me. We're going to talk about what's going on, where you're at, what are we looking at, blah, blah, blah. You could ask Isaiah Feliciano. Isaiah Feliciano is part of my mentorship program. I have another, I think, 25, 30 people that are part of the mentorship program. And we, we talk once a month. And not just that, if you have a question that popped up or whatever, uh, if I can't do a face tip, you text me and we're going to go back and forth. So the, the, the membership program is already there. It's alive and well. If you guys didn't know about it, now you do. And it's up to you if you want to use it or not. All right. Big Lou, you're a poet. I know he is. All right. Number love. I love that. I love that. Guys, I'm going to catch it up. I'm going to catch it up here real quick. Lee Foster. In the UK, the dog pens are full of XL bullies that people didn't want. Now they can't breed from them because of the ban. Yeah. Yeah, man. I I, 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 I am so upset with that whole uh, UK ban thing. For me, is it's just more of a discriminatory way. It's, it's another way of discriminating me. Uh, I think it's more of a, of a class discrimination than it is anything else, guys. Uh, but again, that's just that's just an opinion. Um, Richard Giles, number one, man, is it okay to give your dog cooked turkey? Bro, I would recommend, especially that leg that's got them, it's got them long tendons, bro, but them tendons are, they, they're tricky. They're really hard and very pliable. I would probably run the turkey leg if I could through a grinder uh, because I, I'd probably be afraid of those tendons um, and definitely don't give it cooked bone because cooked bone will splinter whereas raw bone won't. Uh, Beth says if somebody told me they haven't health tested their stud offered to test the dog for the laugh out loud I can picture their faces. Wow Miss Beth I didn't understand what you said but I, I think what you're trying to say Okay, hold on. Let me bring my translator. Go ahead, Hollywood. She's saying if they don't have one, offer to do the test yourself and see what they do. Oh, I've done that. <laughs> I, I, I promise you, I've done that. I've been like, hey, I'm willing to pay you an extra 150 bucks. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> Very good point. And then you'll really know, oh, no, but it's at this point where you really, yeah, yeah, you're just trying to, trying to scam people. What's up, Bama Elite? We got a uh, good morning, Bully family. Miss Beth, I offered so. Yeah, that's Trayvon. Number love, man. Oh, we got Tradesman Exotics. We got a new member in the house. Hit it, Steve-O. Claro que sí, cabrón. You got it, man. Every Sunday at 10 a.m., we're up in here. G-Line says patience is power. And Serata says some of the most, some of them post videos with them yelling at their dogs. Not good marketing tactics. I mean, guys... Look, I'm not saying that a lot of the information you're going to get online is going to be like a college course, but you'd be surprised, man. Some of y'all go get some, go watch some marketing videos, go, uh, go watch some photography videos instead of playing video games all day. I, you know, I, I literally, I just had a consult yes, yesterday with a 42 year old man who's complaining that he can't sell dogs and his wife in the background is saying, cause you don't do none of that stuff. Cause all you do is play video games. 
I'm just keeping it real, man. Shay Tree, I feed my dog cooked turkey three times a week. I mix in chicken heart and chicken liver. Be careful with that chicken liver. All that, um, unless, you know, it's completely, um, what is it called, organic or whatever. Uh, if the hormones that they're shooting into, into chicken and the growth hormones and all that good stuff ends up in the dogs, that's the reason we offer new vet. This is our ordering code, 513237. If you haven't done so, make sure to download QBN app. You're able to order new vet through there as well. Remember, you get 13% off on auto ship. Make sure to order new vet along with new joint plus new joint DS, actually. DS is for double strength, okay? You get 13% off when you have it on auto renewal. Um, let me tell you, man, the results in my yard uh, ever since my dogs have been on UVet, to include the pups, um, have been night and day. And what I mean night and day is there's about a good 15% improvement that I've seen, you know, in everything from health to coat to, you know, bones to the, you know, their skeleton, everything, the structure. Um, that's what I've seen in my yard. Some people have seen better and greater results. Also depends how old is your dog and also if the pathology is actually, you know, genetic or not. And how do you know? Well, if the parents look like Charlie Chaplin and the puppy looks like Charlie Chaplin, yeah, you know, uh, the only reason you may need new vet now more than ever is for the dog's health because he's gonna suffer now because the paws are like that. They're probably not gonna fix. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. But if you've been feeding that $20 kibble because you're that lazy and you're that same guy that's just taking a picture and posting whatever, uh, yeah, your dog's east west, bro. And he's high rear. And he's only, I don't know, let's say five months old. Uh, yeah, you might want to get in UVA and start correcting things. I'm just saying. All right. Uh, let me see, man. We got some questions over here. I just found an Embark test at PestMart if you don't want to order online. I recommend you get it online because the first one you get $50 off. I'm not sure if you get that in PestMart. I'm not, I'm not. I used to read European Dobermans here in the States back in the day and moved into reptiles and just now getting back. I got the dog, I got, I got, I guess the dog scene and honestly, they go hand in hand, just different animals. Yeah. And I'm sure you know that it's cyclical and, and everything else that we had talked about. Uh, Miss Sally says she's an LVT, uh, but I love fresh food diets. Yes, Miss Sally, she works in the ER. Uh, she's a veterinary tech, a licensed veterinary tech. Uh, man, she has pretty much seen everything you can only imagine. Um, and if she's telling you this um, about MCT, I, I would pay close attention. So Lion, I just found an Embark test. Okay, we just hit that. Um, I'm going to have to advance here. Shade Tree, I go to Aldi and get turkey breast. Uh, I use bone broth with it. Uh, I, Miss, Miss Shade Tree, here's a question for you. Why are you spending money on bone broth? Bone broth? Buy yourself a little grinder, a little manual grinder, and grind the bone that you have from the turkey, cooked or not. Give that to your dog. That's better than any bone broth on earth. That's bone. <laughs> not bone broth. That's bone. Straight up bone. Just saying. Uh, Salty, Raul, I think you hit the nail on the head. The only flooded area are the lazy breeders market. I can east, I can east west narrow eyed high rear, having gay tail carrying pet grade dogs breed and show grade, not so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, diseases like DM and DCM. So, Miss Sally, you know I come from the nursing world. So when I see DM, I'm thinking diabetes mellitus. DCM, I know, is dilated cardiomyopathy, and that's when the heart gets bigger, uh, are devastating and can be eliminated by health testing. I've seen beautiful, loving dogs need to be put down for this, and it's heartbreaking. This is coming from a licensed uh, veterinary technician. This is not coming from me. So just keeping it real with you. This is why you need health test. Um, in Saratha, we have a German Shepherd female who has one copy of DM, so we won't breed her. There you go. There's your answer. Here for you. I wholeheartedly appreciate that. I love working line, line breeds like German Shepherds and Dutch Shepherds. All right. So, you know, dilated cardiomyopathy. One other thing I do want to throw out there. And and here's the thing. This is why you can't believe the news and you can't believe everything. For a minute, they were saying that um, kibble that did not have uh, grains 
was causing dilated cardiomyopathy. So they went ahead and added something now to Kittle, which I know what it is five minutes after the show and I walk away, I remember, but I can't remember off the top of my head right now. I've made videos on it. But my point is, at one point they said it caused it and now they say it doesn't. And sometimes you're falling into this um, boxing match between uh, large corporations, if you will. And so for me, in order not to be in the middle, I just feed wrong, you just can't touch me, right? And my dog is getting so much better food and, and not running into these health issues, right? Uh, in comparison, if I was feeding kibble and at a fraction of the cost, you can't beat that. You're just keeping it real, man. Um, guys, I'm going to skip because I'm over the hour. I'm trying to kind of catch up. Uh, do you think spaying a female who already had three litters is best or just leave her entire? I spayed my girl uh, in Sarata. I spayed my girl um, Aruba. Um, this is what she looked like before she was spayed. Hold on a second. Here you go. This is what she looked like before she was spayed. Right now, she's about another. You could add another 30 pounds to that frame. And that's just because now she, you know, I shifted the hormones in her body. Um, but yeah, I went ahead and I spayed her. And the reason I spayed her is to be responsible because in my yard, we have many males. And I let my dogs out together. And any moment, uh, you know, I got mounds. I can't have my eyes on every single dog at all times, even if I wanted to, right? Because they could be behind the mound. So, no, I went ahead and spayed her. Uh, last thing I want is, you know, to breed her again. I already bred her for three times. If you didn't get what you wanted then, then, you know, hey, I, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, good morning, Bully Nation. Raul, loving what you're doing for the breed community. Keep up the great work. Number love, man. Appreciate you. Guys, I really need your help, man. I need you to, to share us. Uh, I'm trying to get this podcast out there. For those of you that don't make it a habit, I would suggest, man, and it's, it's, it's free information. It's good information. Just every time you're going to work or coming from work, go ahead and pop us on there. Just listen to us. Don't be driving and looking at it. Nah, just listen. And, um, and then anything that you need to go over, you can rewatch and you're going to be noticing that you're going to be shifting your mindset and you're going to start making better decisions that are going to lead you to success. I guarantee that. Um, let's see. Let's see. DCM is rampant in Dobermans. I used to believe uh, DNA would have prevented, but now I don't because I've had Dobermans get DCM that were negative on testing. Here's the problem, tradesmen. I'm gonna tell you something too. DCM, dilated cardiomyopathy, has to do with diet and exercise. So if there's not a genetic propensity because you DNA tested, that's a great plus. But if you're a lazy breeder and you're feeding her that $20 kibble and you're not running her, she's just a house dog and she's gaining weight, well, guess what, bro? You may be causing the DCM. Just keeping it real with you, bro. Um, Let's see. Uh, Spain retired female would prevent them from getting uh, parametria. That is correct as well. Yeah. Not just that, it also lowers the probability of tumors. Uh, large breed dogs have been known to have a higher propensity of cancer or tumors. And this is because of, of their IGF-1. For those of you that have followed me when I've gone over Embark and I talk about IGF-1, which is the uh, growth hormone, obviously, it's going to be higher in in bigger dogs than it will in the in the smaller ones and so there's a direct link that older dogs the reason they don't last as long and they also have tumors or or have a higher propensity for tumors or cancers is because of this idf1 okay that that is able to cause that so the way around it the way around it is because there is a hormonal chain all the way down, when you grab yourself a female and you spay her, now her progesterone levels are lower, right? Because progesterone, um, I'm sorry, not progesterone, uh, estrogen. Estrogen has been also known to cause tumors. So now you're taking at least one component out of it and you're hoping that in the chain reaction of hormones that you're able to break one of the links. Okay, uh, like I said, uh, I've never had a dog with a tumor. 
never had one. Uh, and I pray to God that Aruba never has anything like that. And, and that was one of the reasons that led me is that I know that there's a propensity and the way around it is by Spain. So that's why I did that. Um, what is, <clears throat> what is CRD one? Uh, man, I'm sure it's got something to do with the eyes, but off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. I know CRD four cause I've researched the living daylights out of it. Uh, Bam elite. I'm not sure if you ever spoke on it before, but what is the earliest age you can embark puppies? I've embarked puppies at two days old. In fact, this last litter, I'm pissed. I'm, I'm pissed off. Uh, this last litter I embarked, um, when they were two weeks old, I let my pups go when they're 10. So for eight weeks, they had eight weeks to give me my results and I only have half the litter. So definitely, um, if you can try doing it at two days it'd be, be or at one day, it doesn't matter. The genes are not going to change. <laughs> uh, I used to train shut sun, so they were active. I really think it was kibble. I switched to raw over the years. There's, there's your answer. There's your answer. There's your dilated cardiomyopathy. This is why I don't feed kibble. You're sidestepping so many issues, so many renal issues, allergy issues, heart issues, uh, behavioral issues. Guys, kibble that has corn, corn the way that dogs process corn, you'll have a dog bouncing off of walls if you feed him that. Stay away from that stuff, man. Is there going to be another bully stack off competition this year? I don't know, Gabe. Maybe at the end of the year, I might just do it. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Marley, keep in mind, spaying and neutering too early can cause bone cancer and other problems. Marley, I'm glad you brought it up. Guys, please don't spay a dog before they're 18 months. Please don't do that to a dog. Let them mature at least. If you can, wait until two years. If you can, at least until they're two years. That'd be nice. Just keeping it real with you guys, man. Hey, I'm bringing my guys from the back. Steve-O, let them have it. Quality Bully Nation. You already know, fam, the platform where you come to raise your game and stay in your lane. Catching you on the next one. Hollywood! Hey, I was going to say something about that bone brawl, too, man. If you notice, even if you have the low sodium, it still has onion and a lot of different things that are really bad for your dog if you buy it from the store. So just be mindful of that, too. It's your boy, Hollywood Holland. You boy in the back of the queue, and we're catching you on the next one. Just real quick, I'm going to answer uh, one last question I've seen here that I kind of liked. And somebody was asking, oh, here it is. Sulema Santiago, what is ALT? Is it a flaw? I was seeing a stud embark and shows variant activity. ALT is, it doesn't affect your dog. It's low liver, um, it's, uh, it's a liver enzyme. And it just, it just means that the dog, his normal value is low. This is mostly for your vet to know, because if your vet is going to give him a medication and he gets normal numbers, what it really means is the numbers are high. They're not low. If that makes any sense. I actually like, I've noticed dogs that have low ALT typically have more musculature. I'm just saying, keeping it real with you oh, guys. Hey, yes, sir. D Taylor spin today. We forgot. Oh, the spin. Oh man, look, tell you what, D Taylor, do me a favor. Get a hold of Kyle. Uh, forget to spin. I'm just gonna send you a hat and I'm gonna send you a beanie. All right, you won. Just like that, you got it. So just get in touch with Hollywood and we're gonna make sure we uh we send that over. And without further ado, it's been Raul from the Cube catching you Thursday, 8 p.m. <laughs>